I guess, um, the backstory of, uh, of how this all came to be. Um, I didn't even know that she was only there for six days. Six days. Yeah. That's, that, that's wild. And the other girl was there for longer. Um, now, the only girl, and we know that, you know, she was, you know, jogging every day and walking the dogs and going grocery shopping and everything else like that. So she didn't have an issue before until this chick showed up. Right. Um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, if we can go over, uh, you know, sure. summarize it to the, the best that you want to. I, I can I can definitely walk you guys through in your listeners. But before I, before I do that, I just want to make a, a brief sort of statement about the Romanian government and the system over there. Please. Yeah. Because Andrew and Tristan's uh, fate um, is in their hands. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually think right now that in terms of justice, the, the way that the Romanian justice system is trending is uh, a bit more honorable than uh, what's happening in, let's say, the D.C. courts in, in the United States. It's true. Um, <laughs> The judges over there don't don't seem to be very influenced by outside policies. Um, they, they they they've recently looked at the the file, the case file against Andrew and Tristan, and they let them out after months of incarceration. It's mm. not very often that you see one or two men who are accused of you know leading an organized crime ring of human traffickers, and then they get let out and put back out on the street. Yeah, you have to ask yourselves well, why has that happened? Right. Well, it, it happened because there came a point in time where the the judges were actually able to look at the file, mm -hmm. and they were saying, and they have said, which is demonstrated by their release. There, there's a lot of problems with this, mm -hmm. and unless there's more. Um, we're not going to hold them in. You don't see that in human trafficking cases ever. That is an indication of innocence. That is an indication of problems with the Romanian with the Romanian case. So you have to ask yourself, well, why haven't they thrown out the case in Romania altogether? If it's weak, and it is weak, we can discuss it in, in, with great particularity. The reason why that hasn't happened is because there is this believe all women captain in the soy boy army prosecutor who has a personal vendetta for one reason or another against Andrew mm. and against Tristan. Mm. And he's a fairly influential prosecutor. He's got a, a, a pretty good career of putting people away before this. And he has uh, targeted Andrew and Tristan and he won't let up. Mm. And what prosecutors do often even in, in the Innocence Project related cases, a guy will be in jail for 20 or 30 years for a rape and a murder he did not commit. He'll be exonerated from, from DNA evidence. He will subsequently sue and get tens of millions of dollars for the decades of life that he lost. The prosecuting office will never even issue an apology. Of course not, yeah. They don't care. Wow. They just, they don't care. They don't care about human life. So they, they just... They have this tunnel vision, and because they're the establishment, and because they don't need to apologize, they won't apologize. So what you have with the Romanian prosecutor is something that's very typical. It's tunnel vision. He has a vision, and he believes that he's right, and no one's going to tell him otherwise. Um, it is my hope that the Romanian justice system and the court sees this for what it is, looks at the file based on its merits and facts, and does not listen to this guy, because, because this guy shouldn't be listened to. This guy's not a good person. Mm -hmm. He's targeting them, and um, people need to know about it. Let me ask you this, because we brought this up on the show multiple times before, defending Anna Tristan, and we were there in Romania for a couple of days. Yeah. And there was evidence, and you could see even in the rooms, there's camera footage, Everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. Yep. So if they were doing anything illegal, it'd be on camera. Why don't they sh just show the footage in court? There is no footage of anything illegal. What you have that's available in footage is these women being free to go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we well, showed it. We showed on our yeah. on our podcast. We showed on the CCTV. Of them like walking out with their bags. Eating, up. shopping, having fun, laughing. Yeah, coming yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Dancing at a party. Yeah. If you're being held captive, then oh, you can leave just like that yeah. and then come back. Why come back? It is an absolute and disgusting defamatory lie that has caused an untold amount of damage to them. And um, we're not going to stop in, until we've cleared their names, mm. uh, cleared their names in Romania and asserted their, their, their interests and their constitutional rights in the United States. Gotcha. Wow. Um, so uh, so th th that I think that's an important distinction for the people to know that this is not... A U.S. court of law where the criminal case is is being filed. It's a it's a foreign court. Um, 
I don't know if they have the presumption of innocence before uh, before being proven guilty in Romania. Is that the standard of proof? Is it beyond it's, a reasonable it, doubt? It, is it completely different? Or it's it's a little bit different. I'm I'm no expert in Romanian law. I, yeah. I consult on the case out there, and we do a great job. But I leave that up to Aline mm -hmm. um, and the team out there. They're they're fantastic at, at what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There are some similarities. There are some differences. One of the differences is the fact that they'll go before a panel of judges, and it won't be a jury. Um, oh, there is no no jury trials. It, yeah, it's not going to be a jury like you would have over here. Okay. Uh, another difference is perjury is kind of treated differently over there. It's not as serious as it is here. Oh wow. Whereas uh, one of the one of the good distinctions about Romania is what is treated far more serious than in, in the United States is if if you mm -hmm. falsely accuse him mm -hmm. in court. And we can prove that you falsely accused him in court. Then it's your ass. Okay. Then, then, then you're in trouble. It's like perjury plus one in the United States. Okay. So let's talk about that for a minute. Sure. Emma Gabby goes into Romanian court. She files a false complaint and testifies falsely. She falsely accuses Andrew and Tristan in court. Because Romanian law is so strong on somebody's accusations, uh, cases formed against them, and they they eventually wind up in jail. There are text messages, communications, and video evidence that completely refutes her claims. We just spoke about some of the CCTV footage. Mm -hmm. When you look at the text messages, you see her, Emma, and Aliona saying, hey, I'm going to, we're going to get Oscars for this. They're going to give us a golden trophy. Do you want us to pull it up on the complaint? Uh, yeah, we can... Uh, let me see if we can pull it up on the complaint. Yeah, I remember seeing those uh, texts on WhatsApp basically go back and forth with her, her family, and then the girls. And uh, you could see clearly that they were acting to get a, res uh, a response and uh, put Andrew Tristan away. Yeah. And, um, and you said that she, um, Emma Gammy, testified uh, in court. Does that? Do you mean like when she gave her police statement or her statement to DICOT or the police or law enforcement? Uh, she gave that, and that's considered like a sworn statement because they haven't been in Romania since, right? They've been gone. I know they went to the French Riviera and party oh, for a having bit. Having fun, you know. Right, right. So they, she gave a written statement. Okay. And she spoke to the judges uh, in, in the court. She. Okay. So that's how it goes there. It's imp so, since we're talking about Dicot real quick, it's it's also worthy to note that Dicot is filled with good people. Mm -hmm. They're getting a bad reputation in the press, but I actually think that Dicot is more honorable than the FBI. Far far more honorable. Uh, they're good people over there who care about the truth and who care about justice. They took her allegations very seriously because they're just not accustomed to women coming in their court lying about human trafficking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? They yeah. so they took it seriously. Yeah. But the she her statements are controverted. They're completely controverted. They're they're disqualified. They're they can be impeached in a court of law in, in a million different ways because she literally says that we're lying. We're going to get awards. We're, we're going to go put on tears right now. I can't wait to go to London. I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to do that. They lie across different different mediums: WhatsApp, text messages, conversations, videos. And there's no truth to what they're saying. So what do we do with that information? We have, we're trying to get the Romanian court to take notice of the fact that Emma's actually the wrongdoer and the Romanian system is also a, a victim of, of her scheme. Now, this, a lot of this sounds like, well, you know, okay, she lied in text messages, that maybe it's not that serious, but it's, when you look back at her history, she has a history in the United States, in particular in Florida, of falsely accusing men who has, she has had sex with after she can't blackmail them, after she can't say, I'm going to report you. If they don't give in to her demands, she then actually reports them. There have been many men who have... There's one man who's gone to jail because of it. There's another man who had his life ruined because of it. And... We have a history here, a modus operandi, a history of this woman weaponizing the criminal justice system against men in order to destroy their lives. So you can't just look at this situation in Romania in isolation. As a one-off. As a one-off. You mm -hmm. got to connect it to her, to her, to her trail of victims. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you connect it, you see a 10-year scheme. Mm -hmm. She thought that she could just 
continue to do what she was doing in America and go to Romania and do it there. Yeah. And it was going to be just as inconsequential, right? Guy would go to jail for the weekend, or maybe this would happen or that would happen. That would be the end of it. But the whole thing blew up because, you know, she went after two men who who who, who are not your average Joes. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's very important for the audience to know that w- what this girl does, guys, is uh, she gets on dating sites, uh, sugar sites especially, where she targets rich, affluent guys, and um, she hooks up with them, and then she'll disclose them after, oh, I was young, I was 17, or she'll say, hey, if you don't tell, give me this or that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the police and uh, allege a crime against you of rape or whatever it may be, or sexual assault. And, you know, these guys look at it like, okay, I know I didn't do it. But do I want the headache of dealing with this and potentially being uh, having my reputation ruined? Because we all know on this side of the Internet, especially if you're accused of a crime like this, whether you're innocent or guilty, your reputation is going to take a significant hit. Yeah. You know, no one cares that you were exonerated and that she was lying. They care that you were accused in the first place and you're always going to carry that title. So what do the guys do? Well, I have the money to pay her off. Leave me alone. And they pay her off. And she's been able to do this successfully for a very long time, especially targeting. uh rich guys um and she used this through sugar sites hinge bumble all these dating sites that she's used it with and didn't she have a boyfriend at, at the time so, yeah, if, oh yeah at the time when she was in romania i think she did actually that's crazy bro yeah well if we want to pull up uh page 39 of the complaint all right um and while bills pulls that up can you give the guys real quick because um we've been Jumping around a bit as far as like, you know, her background, everything else like that. Can we cover the six days or what led up to the six days of what happened? um, Just the general facts. Sure. Just so the guys know what happened. So, uh, Emma. You can hide it for now, Bill. We got it ready, though. So after, go ahead. You can give the summary and then we'll pull it up. Sure. Emma meets uh, Tristan on, on, on a dating site. Okay. Right? So, you know, Tristan's like any other dude. He's in Miami. He's scrolling away, and he, um, she looks good. And I like you. You like me. She's like, he's a good-looking guy. She's like, I like him. They meet up. Mm-hmm. She comes to a, uh, a a war room event in Miami. Oh, um, wow. That was... Oh, wow. That must have been... Recent, when, when they were here with us. On the boat. Dece- it, December was, of 22? 21. Yeah. I could have the years mixed up here. Yeah, December 21. That was when yeah. they were here. Yeah. I think it was when we did our Avengers pod around wow. that time. Yep. I didn't know that. He met her in Miami physically here. Physically in Miami. Oh, okay. Yeah, she she preys on guys in Miami. She's cold-blooded, bro. Yeah. Cold, cold-blooded. So. Damn. Okay, yeah. so she met him here. Uh, I remember that when they were here. So okay, and then sorry, I didn't mean. No, to. it's okay. Look, it, it's, it's that's like, crazy. It's like it could have been you. Yeah, they could've knew been each other. anybody. Yeah. They, dude, they known each other for that. I didn't know they knew each other that long. Wow. All right. So okay, so they meet in about the end of 2021, right? In Miami. You know, they, they they talk for a bit online. She represents herself as an affluent, uh, young, aspiring. Artists, you know, <laughs> of who, course, typical Miami girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a rapper. Yeah. I'm a TikToker. I'm an yeah, influencer, a musician. Yeah. All right, bro. So she can she can sing and she can play instruments, right? Mm-hmm. So um, at some point, uh, the war room event is wrapping up. There's a bar. There's a piano, and she starts playing on the piano and singing. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, "Oh wow, who's this girl? Very interesting. She mm-hmm. presents well. Um, she meets Tristan. One thing leads to another. Uh, they hook up. They have fun." And off he goes, you know, back to his life, and he starts to travel again. They, mm. they, they talk periodically over the course of that time. She uh, is interested in, in leaving to Romania uh, because she knows that he's there. He's like, look, um, and you can see this in, in the text messages. Between- and Romania is not close, guys. Yeah, it's no, far. It's not you, close. You're going out of your way to go out there. So this woman goes out of her way to go see Tristan. Yeah, and Tristan even, like, says, hey, look, you, you got a good life. Why do you want to leave? Oh, the politics here are too much. America's too aggravating. Uh, there, there's a real opportunity for me in Romania. I can go do this. I can do that. He says, okay, you want to come? Come. So um, she's like, okay, uh, can I have your credit card so I can book a flight? Mm-hmm. She grabs his card, books herself a business class flight out to, out to Romania, mm-hmm. and um, she's there for a few days. Mm-hmm. Uh and the first couple of days, everything is fine. 
and she realizes that she's not the only beautiful girl in town. Mm-hmm. And there's she, many, <laughs> right? There's many, and all of a sudden she has an axe to grind with him. She tries to uh, exert influence over him, like she would do other guys, but he's not easily intimidated. Yeah, he just says, "Hey, listen, you know, you're here. Have a good time. Everything is all right." She tries to get involved in Andrew's personal business. He's, please don't get involved in my brother's business. That's that's not your lane. Stay in your lane. You came here to do something good. Do it. Two days later, she's accusing him of human trafficking. Wow. That and, is the full scope of what happened. Add in a party that she danced in, you know, with her friends. I remember that. A few pizzas, some shopping. That's her entire Which Andrew trip. and Trista weren't even there when they filmed those TikToks and they said they were being held. And I think they went to the police like the next day after that party and made their accusations on or about April 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. So, 2022? Yeah, it's uh, for, for, first first week of April. She gets there around the 5th. She's gone by like the 11th, I believe, 11th or 12th. Okay. At some point, she realizes what she did. Mm-hmm. And she goes... So she calls the U.S. Embassy. So she's there at the house, and she calls the U.S. Embassy. Uh, or did she call her family first? Well, she called, she called her family. Okay. And she called her family should objectively know that she's troubled and has a long and storied history yeah. of, of pulling crap of life. She's run away from them too, plenty of times, right? Yes. And falsely, there was a uh, if you if you just Google Emma Gabby, go to Facebook and put her name. Or she's just been exposed. Google on, her on Twitter too. Yeah, she's been exposed. But her first lie was like there was a news report about her in like. 2016 or 15, it was like, oh, this girl was kidnapped, and she like ran to Orlando or something, and then there was a subsequent report was like, oh, it was basically just a hoax, like she was fine. And it's still there, you can pull it up. Like she's been lying for a long time. Mm. And um, so we, we mentioned her boyfriend in, yeah. in Florida. Mm-hmm. So she reaches out to him, okay. Matt. So she calls her family and his, and her boyfriend, boyfriend, yeah. Right, so he, he comes in like real hot. Wait, of course. Nice. Cat, like, riding on a horse. Cat, yeah. cat, cat, Captain Save a Hope. Like, yeah. He, yeah, literally. <laughs> he, comes, yeah. he comes in like, you know, you're being human trafficked. This is what's going on. And she's like dancing with him, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, yeah, this is happening. Like, it's like a little bit adventurous. Like, it's a little bit of guilt. Maybe she wants to get money from him. Maybe whatever it is. But he's like, ah, you need to go to the embassy. We need to get the embassy involved. And she realizes that if the embassy gets involved, she may have to go back home. Right, uh, and she doesn't. Wa- she doesn't want to go back home. She wants to hang out, and then she wants to go to London. Hmm. This is not somebody who's being human trafficked. Yeah. You, you being human trafficked, you want to get the hell out of there yesterday, right? Yeah. yeah. So she literally tells him, "Please don't do this. T- I take it all back. Don't, don't, don't get the embassy involved. Don't do this. Don't do that." And if you look at page thirty nine on the on, on the complaint, let's pull it up real fast. It's uh, paragraph ninety seven. Yep. Right here, I see it in the in the bold. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here I can grab my glasses and read it. Finally, as E. Gabby becomes fully aware of the ramifications of her actions, she wants Martelli to retract the U.S. Embassy call, and then proceeds to accuse Martelli of orchestrating the scheme. And here's the text right wow. here. Wow. Martelli, she's a human trafficking victim. Martelli should be entitled to protection. Gabby goes, but she needs to go to London to her family. We bought the tickets. I wish I could take it back. Please, Matt. Please do anything. Uh, I'll do anything to take it back. Martelli goes, yes, they'll evaluate her. E. Gabby goes, I'm so sad you're doing this. And she's referring, guys, to Aliona, the um, the, the other girl, the, the other girl yeah. who was with Andrew at the time, uh, the Moldovan dancer that lives in the UK. Right. Wow. Right. And if you scroll up. Uh, uh, Straight from her phone, guys. And this is probably done via, I'm assuming, through WhatsApp, right? Uh, these uh, these yeah, messages. WhatsApp messages. Yeah. And uh, at the top of that page, you see some other messages. Uh-huh. And she, you know, he's like, "Yeah, I called." And she's like, "Goodbye, Matt. I just wanted to go to London. Like, it's only me and the other girl who wanted to leave." And she's clearly, yeah, see here, not yeah. in a state of duress. She's yeah. clearly not being human trafficked. Yeah. So she overcommits. She realizes that the consequences of her actions. Yeah. And instead of just backing people up and saying, hey, look, this has gone too far. This is not what it seems. Mm-hmm. Once the authorities get involved, she commits. she commits. She doubles and she triples down. Yeah. So it's consciousness of guilt. Yeah. This is her straight up admitting, this is not what I said it was. I should probably just. This kills know, it in the water right here. Right here. And these are her messages from her phone to her boyfriend. Because this is what probably went down. And please correct me because you actually had access to the messages and you wrote this complaint. 
She tells her boyfriend, I'm in Romania, I'm being held against my will, to absolve herself of responsibility of cheating on her boyfriend. Boom. Right? And then he's like, because if he told her, if she had told him straight up, oh yeah, I bought business class tickets and I came out here to see Tristan and fuck him, that wouldn't so, sound so good, would it? So instead she's like, I'm being held here against my will, so that she gets him on her side. He reacts, right? Oh my God, my girl's in danger. She's being held. We need to call the embassy, blah, blah, blah. And then once she realizes that there's no turning back once you involve the U.S. embassy and the government and the police are going to come, etc., she's like, no, 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 please don't do that. And then once the police actually do get involved, she switches her story back up again. Is that what it was? The context? She basically comes in on the frame, am I being held against to absolve herself of che being a cheater? Uh, I I'm sorry, bro. If my girl's going to Romania of all places, <laughs> randomly, what did she tell me to go there? I want to know what she's saying because, bro, yeah. that's thousands of miles. Away. Bro, what the yeah. hell? What, what, did, what did she say in that in the beginning, I guess? I mean, I, I don't know what, what, what she said, uh, <laughs> what her excuse was in, ter in terms of, of, of why she went there. We didn't, we didn't get those messages uh, yet. But if, if you go up, up to page 36, right, just scroll up a few pages in paragraph 91, she's actively trying to talk him out of it again. Mm -hmm. and, we'll pull uh, it up, Bills, please. Yo, this is a while, bro. I didn't uh, know. Paragraph 91, right? Yeah, if you see Martelli, it says, the, it's, yeah, here say we go, I'm an yeah. American and I'm in danger. Martelli, apparently in love with, in love or infatuated with E. Gabby, then starts contacting government friends that eventually puts the United States Embassy in Bucharest on alert of Emma. Gabby's allegations that Gabby and, e and uh, Aliona Untila were being human trafficked by the Tate brothers. Martelli does this despite the fact Gabby tries to talk Martelli out of calling the U.S. Embassy as de demonstrated in the below. And then, bam, there's the messages right there. And if you look, underlined, don't many any calls, please. Yep. I just want to go to London. LOL, yeah. bro. What the? Heck? Yeah, bro. I want to go to London. LOL, bro. This is this is scary stuff, man. She ruined two guys' lives, or tried to ruin it. But because just... number one, she didn't want to admit to her boyfriend that she was cheating on him. Yeah. And then number two, she wanted to go to London. She's a a serial a serial cheater. Yeah. For 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 sure, she's a serial extortionist. She's a, a serial liar. If you if you go up to uh, let's see. And I, I want the audience to also understand this kills it dead in the water because you guys can remember all of these charges pretty much stem from this yes what you guys are seeing right here these accusations that she's making are what generated all of this in the first place it's why the search was done it's why the house was raided it's why they were arrested uh, later on in the year it comes from this and you can see actively she's trying to withdraw the statement like no no no, don't tell the u.s embassy and they also use videos out of context to add to this agenda as well they they, sh they sure do and wow the 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 exhibits in the Florida case right now are under seal. Their their lawyer um, is trying to uh, prevent the public from seeing uh, what's actually in, in in these exhibits. Most of the exhibits. Oh, are her her lawyer. Yes, yeah, is, her, is, her is, American lawyer. Okay, her American lawyer that's defending her in the defamation case doesn't want your guys' evidence out there. <laughs> no, well, for no, obvious she reasons. Doesn't. It's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you see... Wait, we, it's, can, can you fight that? Like, say, hey, oh, we're, fight, we're fighting it, right? We're fighting it, and we're going to win. We have evidence of her as a sex worker. We have evidence of her targeting guys. We have exit of... I mean, you name it, it is there. It is a worst-case scenario in terms of who she is morally and who she is as a criminal, and this is why they're trying to bury it. But if you, if you just go up to, to, to page 34, right? Sure. And... Uh, you see where it says uh, paragraph 86. You just scroll right above that real quick. Yep. And it says, uh, I'm talking to my friend about it now. She's saying you should try to get money from Andrew. They're talking about how to get money from Andrew before mm. they bounce to London. And then if you just scroll down below that, paragraph 86, it says cover tracks. What always. Oh, my I'm God. I'm going to pull some tears out. I mean, do you see this? These are messages. Oh, my God. You scroll down to the next page. This is evil, man. Page 35, right above paragraph 88. We're going to write a movie ASAP. Let's wow. email Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. I'm dying inside. I'm laughing. They, they're they just like, look, we're going to destroy these guys' lives. We're going to become famous. No one is going to believe that, that these guys are not guilty. And then we're going to have a, a Netflix series about it. Wow. So this is... Dead in the water on fifty-five different occasions. Dead this, in this makes me makes me mad, bro. Yeah, it should make you. Mad. This could happen to anybody, dude, bro. People, bro, we could have met this chick. People are. Uh, that's she's what I'm from saying, Miami, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like we could have met this chick. Because people are saying, "Oh, they're guilty." But if it was your brother, 
your father, you wouldn't be laughing or saying that at all. Yeah. And that's this is malicious, man. It's like intentionally being evil. It's pure evil. Damn, bro. Yeah, it it it, it is it is pure evil. And so she's into like some wild stuff and I, I, I want to be careful about what I'm saying about her. I would encourage everybody mm -hmm. to, and I'll make it available to you guys and maybe we can put it up at some point. We have a link to the complaint to read the complaint and to read the, the, the statement of facts. Anybody who reads these statement of facts, mm -hmm. especially if you're a Tate detractor, if you hate Andrew and Tristan Tate, and if you think that, that they are guilty as hell, you should read this. You should think about the evidence that's cl clearly presented in the complaint and then ask yourself at the end of that process, can I really say with any reasonable degree of certainty, with a reasonable mind, that they are guilty? They are not. And when you look at the body count that she has and how many guys' lives that she's destroyed, you're going to see somebody who is beyond the pale in terms of... Uh, uh, a predator. She is a sexual, serial predator who preys on men and who destroys their lives. If you go to um, page 20, at the top of page 20, mm -hmm. there, there's a man who's in jail. And I'm, I'm not going to say his name because um, it's the subject of another, of another Florida case. Yeah. But the man is in jail. Mm -hmm. And Emma, before she was 18 had this scheme where she would uh, go on these dating sites, say she was 22, she was 24, she had fake ID, she would go to bars, go out on dates. You have no reason to suspect Report that she herself to be of age. That's right. And then she would say, oh, by the way, remember that, you know, I, I want you to, to do this, I want you to do that, you don't yeah. do it. I'm underage. I'm underage. I've been having sex with you for a year. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? Oh, if you don't do what I want you to do right now, I'm going to report you for statutory rape. You know, in Florida, all they got to do is breathe that in the court, and you're going to get smoked. You're going yeah. down. Fine. Not knowing of age is not a defense in the state of Florida, guys. So in other words, if a chick is underage, and you hook up with her, and you was like, I met her at a bar. I thought she was 21. She told me she was 21, and you have all this proof. It doesn't matter. It, it, you, that is not a legal defense to, uh, to statutory rape. That's right. In Florida. There is one guy, mm -hmm. and there were probably others, but there is one guy who he's incarcerated right incarcerated right now. He got like a twenty six year sentence. Mm -hmm. Now this guy um, was way older than her, and she was on the younger side at that time, but she still lied to him about her age. Mm -hmm. Maybe he knew, maybe he should have known. I don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But he's in jail. What is relevant about it is that she did not tell the court the police, the prosecutors, that she lied to him about his age before they had sex. And while that's not a defense in Florida, it would be relevant for sentencing. It's a difference if you've knowingly uh, did it for, okay. current, for purposes of sentencing and did not know it. So that could have took what's now a 26-year sentence, and maybe it would have been a 10-year sentence or a 5-year sentence. Who knows, right? Yeah. But she's with this guy, Marlon. And Marlon Fisher has sued her right now in in uh, in court mm -hmm. in, in Palm Beach. He's the guy who I told you about. She's having a conversation about him. Marlon finds out that she's underage. He starts digging into her life and finds out that she's destroyed all these people's lives. Yep. He finds out that there's this guy in jail, sitting in jail, uh, unjustly for uh, too long of a time. He tells her, look, you should tell the police about uh, the truth. That way, you know, you can clear this up for him. She threatens him. She threatens to have him locked up, and he drops it because he's just like, look, I can't deal with this right now. Mm -hmm. At some other point, she's talking about going to meet the uh, the prosecutor. And for the other case that's putting the other guy in jail. For the, for the other case. If yeah. you, sorry, if you just go up to 19. Okay. So Marlon's confronting her, and if you see the highlighted portion. This right, is page 19 right here? Yeah. Okay, uh, if right. If you choose that one. Okay, if you, she goes, if you choose to blackmail me, I'd have no choice except to be honest with the world about what you've done to me, uh, why, and you would have to suffer the repercussions of the truth among several men that are attributing to my problems and behavior of whom I also have evidence for. And then he goes, I hear your points, and I'm not manipulating you to do anything. You could do something to prevent me if this were blackmail. There is nothing you can do. I hoped you wouldn't be shallow and selfish. I hoped you would show me you care. You show me you don't care at all. And then she responds, you blackmailed, betrayed my trust, and abandoned me. Emphasis added. And then uh, 
Abby goes, she goes, thanks for abandoning me, emphasis added. Notice so, her choice of words. Yeah, of course. She's very smart. I hope she's texting back. Yeah. For, she's, for evidence. Yeah. Very smart. So now if you scroll down to the ne- just the, ne- the top of the next page. Okay. Now, she's going to... Inquires go- with M. Fisher, this one? Yeah, that's one right there. So let's, let me give context. She's yeah. getting ready to go meet with the Palm Beach County prosecutor, right? Yeah, because she's the witness. Because she's the witness, and sentencing is getting mm-hmm. ready to happen. And sentencing is getting ready to happen. Sorry about that. And he's saying, uh, do the right thing. And she's saying, I will... T- I will what you what, what we just read i'll ruin yeah. your life um so and he tells her to come clean and not put this innocent guy in jail and that, she's like no i'm gonna is, continue that is right so what she does is on her way to court or at some point she puts a butt plug in her ass <laughs> and then she says to him do you think the butt plug will go off as i when i cross the metal detectors going into court she's getting off on this guy's suffering wow right and read that right there would a butt plug go off through a metal detector? For context, E. Gabby's asking M. Fisher if wearing her butt plug would set off the course, the courthouse metal detector that she needed to go through in order to meet with district attorney, who was prosecuted, John, uh, jailed John based on E. Gabby's allegations. So this woman gets sexual satisfaction from wrongfully putting a man in jail with lies, and she's asking her current lover if the, the butt plug in her anus is going to go off <laughs> like bro this is fucking sick it it's it it's it's next level sick so at some point things go bro, this, this is, is wild this is a bad, worse than a scary movie bro bro going to meet with the prosecutor who's going to ruin this man's life she's going to lie under oath by the way meeting with this prosecutor um as a witness in the case and she gets off to putting this innocent guy in jail wow so wow marlon the guy who's telling her to clear it up yeah Shortly thereafter, the guy, Emma says, I want you to go to uh, a concert with me. Marlon's like, I got to work. I can't do this. I need to be left alone. Mm. So she uh, says, well, if you don't uh, do what I want you to do, I will uh, accuse you of, of rape and domestic violence in court. She files a false report against him in Palm Beach court. He's got to go in. Um, he's like, look, I'm done with you. You, you lied to the Palm Beach County court. Like you did about this other guy. I'm not dealing with this anymore. And she issues like this long statement to him in a series of text messages Mm -hmm. where she admits to lying. And she says, look, I'm going to clear this up. So if you just go to to 20 to page 20 right there Mm -hmm. and where it says M Fisher, he's talking about, these are all the false things that you said about me in court. Okay. Right guys, just so you know, uh, we're going to read the chats and we're going to read, uh, the, the rants after this. We just want to make sure we get it all out there. So if we answer one of your questions throughout the course it'll be answered and then you know obviously we'll open it up for q a at the end um so okay sorry so this is uh page 20 here you said yeah and i mean in terms of pulling this complaint apart i think this is like the really like the last paragraph that you that you should read okay but write down into until the quotes are done into the next page okay i will uh here let me throw i can read it so this is fisher saying you 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 falsely accused me, and you constructed and masterminded a completely false narrative under me. You're, this is a year before she accuses Andrew and Tristan. So mm-hmm. see what this guy says and how she responds. So he goes, the things I remember being on it were that I was a heavy user of illicit drugs, would beat you when you tried to leave, restrained you from leaving or calling the cops, often left you on the side of the highway if you said anything to upset me. And that I had been stalking you and showing up places that I knew you would be after you anything. So he's reading her complaint that she had given to the police, right. yeah. which weren't, which wasn't true. Right. This now, is what she told them. Now, next page, what does she say? And she responds, that's so fucked up that I wrote that. I'm going to clear this up. Are keep, you fucking kidding me? Keep reading. Get to the bottom. Watch. Not to defend any of this, but to clarify, I promise I never said you were a user of drugs. You weren't the one writing it? Fisher responds. And she goes... The things I were definitely rewarded, uh, the things, I, I think she meant to write here, but I'll read it verbatim. The things I were definitely rewarded and exaggerated, they asked me of events, and then they rewarded my words in the official injunction document. I was brought in to speak to two lawyers, the legal aide who had just finished law school that was defending uh, me and her colleague who was training her. Then she goes, I'm incredibly sorry that what I said encapsulated a completely false narrative, especially that paints you as a terrible person because you aren't. You never deserved to be treated that way. Nobody does. And then she follows up saying, uh. none of it was okay. Absolutely none of it. If there 
is there anything you can think of that I can do to prove that I understand that and truly am repentant? Holy fuck. What yep. the hell? If you go back up to that top thing. Talk that about you, psycho narcissist. Yo. And Bro. it's the same allegations. The things that I remember on it. Uh, the heavy illicit use of drugs, to, I would beat you when you tried to leave, and I restrained you. This is the same kind of allegations against Andrew and Tristan. Yeah. It's not our first time. It's not our second time. It's not our third time. It's our tenth time doing this. And when confronted this. with what she told them, she even says, oh, I didn't mean for it to come off that way. That's exaggerated. There's another point in this complaint. Yo. I mean, Bruh. where she talks about she's a pathological liar. She puts this big confession out into the world. Says, I have a history of lying. I need to lie. I'm a compulsive liar. I mean, if anybody who reads this complaint will see that this woman is totally, totally troubled. Andrew and Tristan are totally innocent. And there's a trail of bodies, including a guy who killed himself. Yeah. Um, pursuant to their interactions with this woman. And uh, yeah, that is... The truth is all right here. All yeah. you gotta do is and read about it. This is directly it. from her phone. Like that. Like guys, these are messages that she personally sent herself. This is from her phone. So Yo, it's like, I can't stress enough. I don't know how much you need the whole facts, bro, on these girls, bro. Because this is dude, crazy. that is crazy. Like, I'm pretty sure if Andrew Houston knew that, they'd never bring yeah. to Romania. Yeah, but <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah, no, they had no clue. Yeah, they had no clue, man. Uh, um, yeah, guys, new rule: a girl on a date with you, Google her name, bro. Yeah. Facts, you have to. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That's wild. Um, real quick, um, yo, we're gonna kill the Twitch, Twitter, Facebook guys. Come on over to YouTube and Rumble. Some chats, real quick. Yeah, and we're I'm gonna hit the chats. Uh, so guys, go ahead. Come on over to to YouTube and Rumble.